As somebody who's taught public speaking for a number of years and done quite a bit of presenting myself, I would have to say that one of the more difficult types of, of public speaking is actually group presentations because it feels like you're just pulling in opposite directions all the time, right? If you're not really with it, then it's very easy to, to be out of sync uh, with your with your team members and with your group mates. So what you really want is to be in sync, of course. And now, not this kind of in sync necessarily, but you need to be in sync as a group. You need to have kind of a singular mindset and you need to have um, really prepared well as uh, to, to give a good group presentation and really you know, find that centralized purpose and it just a lot goes into making a really effective group presentation. So uh, and as a kind of a final chapter for our, our exploration of working in groups, let's talk for a minute about presenting as a group and what that looks like. So there are different types of group presentations that, that we can we can give. Some of them include um, things like debate, um, where you're actually in a formalized uh, you know, back and forth with another group um, in, a, in a, an official debate. That would be the, the process. You know, there would be a specific process and way that you go about that. Uh, but you could also have a forum, which is mostly like an, an you know like a, a larger Q and A session. Um, where somebody's asking you some questions and or the crowd is asking you some questions and you have several people up there in your group is is just answering questions essentially there's also what we call a panel discussion which is more of a a group discussion that people are watching you know usually you have a group of experts that are talking about a particular topic or something and and other people are mostly just watching you know the, the audience is is mostly there as a spectator and they're just you know watching you have a conversation uh, then there's also what we call symposiums uh, which is uh, you know, one group or, or group after group or person after person would speak usually on a central topic, on a singular topic. But, you know, you, you would hear about this topic from different people in different groups. And so there's those types of pre group presentations that we get into occasionally as well. Uh, and then there's just what we would just call other, which is just everything else, which is probably honestly the, the majority of group presentations are actually in this quote unquote other category, which is just presentations we give as part of a class or part of a, a business presentation or, or just whatever it is that we happen to be presenting with other people. So um, there are different types of group presentations. All of them require something a little bit different from us. And so we need to be aware of, of those. But, uh, but for the most part, we just need to know that there are different types and we need to adjust accordingly. One of the first things we need to do with a group presentation is to get organized. We need to have a plan. Before we set out to do this, we need to really um, set ourselves straight on a, on a couple of things as a group. So um, first of all, we need uh, to know what the measure of assessment is. What do we consider a success? What's success going to look like? You know, is it going to be, is it a sales pitch where success is, you know, having made the sale or having X amount of dollars in sale or in a contract when we leave there? Or is it, you know, persuasion or is it whatever? What What is success in this particular um, presentation? Uh, and that's true for individual speakers as well. But as a group, we need to right up front say, okay, how are we being assessed? What are the criteria uh, for which we need to be aware uh, that we are being assessed on for this, this presentation? We also need to, to have a, a real focused energy around output. What is it that, that this should look like in the end? What is it that we're trying to create here? Um, so what, what's the end result going to look like? And then how do we build to that? But we can't, we can't build to that if we don't know what the output is going to be, what this is going to look like in the end. So we need to have a, a clear idea on output. We we'll also need to understand some of the logistics of the situation before we get started. We ought to be clear on some of the log logistical details, things like presentation details. How long do we have for this speech? What's the content supposed to be about? And, and uh, you know, what's the setup going to be? We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But what are some of those details around that? How, you know, again, how long does this need to be? Is this all of us speaking or just all of us preparing this and one person giving the speech? Is it, you know, what are the presentation details that we need to be concerned with about the actual presentation? What's the presentation, uh, the preparation time frame? How long do we have to do this? Is this is this something that's going to be delivered in a week, or is this a month from now, or is it two months from now? You know, what's the preparation timeline? And then again, working backwards from there, really we need to, to understand what the group benchmarks are. What are the benchmarks for? What do we, you know? Where do we need to be at what point along that time frame? If the if the presentation is a month from now, where do we need to be in three weeks? Okay, to get there, where do we need to be in two weeks? And where do we need to be in a week? And so, what do I need to be working on today? Right. So we need to have these these different types of group benchmarks laid out based on that time frame, that preparation time 
time frame, we need to set out these group benchmarks for where we need to be at different points along the line of that time frame. One thing we need to bear in mind as a group and when we're giving a presentation, a group presentation, individual presentation, really, they should all be audience centered. We need to be focused on the audience at all times when we prepare any kind of presentation. And this is this is you know true as well in group presentations, as much so in group presentations as it is an in individual one. So we need to have an audience centered approach and be thinking about the audience at all times during the, the preparation and delivery of this speech and this presentation. One way we do that is by focusing on content. What is our you know, content going to be and how is that going to be um, viewed and accepted by the audience? How is that going to impact the audience? We, we can think about a couple different things here that go into content. Um, one is usage. One is usage. How is the audience going to be able to use this information? How is this going to apply to them? You know, people are, you know, at, at their core, they're egocentric, meaning we are most concerned about those things that affect us most directly. So if we can demonstrate some way and, and provide some way for the audience to actually use this information, then that's going to go a long way toward, um, toward gaining their attention and keeping their attention and uh, just gaining their understanding of what it is we're trying to say or, and or persuasion. If, if that's our end goal, you know, trying to persuade them is going to be affected by, can they use this information and how so? How are they going to use this information? So we need to, to have usage at the forefront of our mind. Knowledge level is another one we need to be thinking about at all times. What is the knowledge level of the audience? We need to hit them at that knowledge level, wherever they're at. We don't want to talk to them like, like they're babies if they're already experts in this area. We need to raise our, our language and, and different knowledge level expectations. And vice versa, though, if they don't have much of any knowledge of this topic, we don't want to jump in at an expert level. So we need to think about usage. We need to think about knowledge level. We need to think about objectives. What is uh, what are our objectives? What are the objectives of the audience? Uh, and so what, what are they going to not only how are they going to be able to use this, but what is their objective and what can we provide them as an objective for, for understanding this information and for knowing this information? And then all of that is going to then go into um, shaping our content and helping us understand what our content should be for that presentation. So we need to be thinking about content throughout the entire thing. And when we do think about content, we need to think about the audience and have an audience centered approach. We also need to think about structure. How are we going to structure this presentation, you know, both in terms of an introduction, a body and a conclusion, but also then um, within that, how are we going to organize this information? How are we going to, uh, include our statistics. How just how are we going to structure this in a way that that is going to most appeal to the audience and help them understand the the easiest and uh, and and reach them uh, most directly. So we need to be thinking about structure in terms of the audience. How are we going to structure this so that that hits the audience uh, in the best way possible? We need to think about packaging. Again, how are we going to divide this up? Are we going to have everybody speak? And if so, are they going to speak in equal parts? And if not. Uh, who's going to speak and how are we going to divide that up and and you know who's who's best matched to what area to speak on what's you know what's everybody's strongest area to speak on so how are we going to divide up the pie in essence you know how are we going to cut the pie up and uh, and decide who does what right and how this work is going to be handled not only the presentation itself but also the work leading up to that finally we need to think about the human element in all of this we need to think about the human element in terms of, you know, these are people. So how do we best draw people in? How do we incentivize this for people? How do we make this as appealing as possible? And how do we just draw them in as individuals thinking again about the audience? How do we pull them in to best connect with and uh, connect with our presentation and, and also help us fulfill our objectives uh, for that presentation. So we want to be sure that we're, we're balancing both of those things, both um, the audience perspective and our own perspective as presenters. Okay, so one of the greatest challenges of delivering a group presentation is really being in sync, as I mentioned before, and, and seriously being in sync, delivering this as though it's coming from one person and having it be as balanced as possible in that way. And uh, so that takes a lot of work. That takes a lot of preparation. So uh, a couple of things we need to consider in terms of achieving that goal of delivering this presentation 
as one is, uh, again, we, we have to have a common purpose. We have to understand what that purpose is. And we have to all be pulling in the same direction and, and trying to accomplish the same thing. And uh, you can't have one person doing their own thing because that's going to just throw off the whole rhythm. If we think of it like an engine, we got to have all, all those pistons hitting in, in, in the correct timing. Otherwise, it's going to throw the whole engine off and it's not going to run properly. Right. So we've got to have that singular purpose as a group and identify that purpose and, and pursue that purpose and, and be committed to that. We also have to think about our oral content. Um, you know, we don't speak the way that we write. So it's great for us to, to write our speech out and to, to have that presentation all written out and things. But we have to think about how this is going to sound and how we can match up our, our kind of our delivery and our, just our oral intonation and our vocalics and all those types of things, our paralanguage. How can we get all of this as much in sync as possible and have the oral content sound like it's coming from one person and not from, you know, four or five different people. We need to think about our dress. You know, how are we going to dress for this situation? And this is true, again, for individual speakers, but also as a group. Uh, what's going to be the most appropriate dress? Uh, in, on some occasions, that's going to be a little less formal, depending on who you're speaking to and, and what, what the situation is, what the context is. Uh, Maybe a little less formal. Other times it's going to be more formal for giving a business presentation. It's a real formal occasion that we ought to dress accordingly. Mostly we want to dress so that we're not distracting uh, in any way from the content of the uh, of the speech. Right? So that people aren't really noticing what we're wearing. We want to wear something that's really kind of not noticeable so that people are focused on the content of our presentation. We also need to think about the facilities. What are the facilities going to be like that we're going to have? So, you know, and that will affect the way we deliver the speech and, and how we dress and everything else. If we're delivering this to a fairly small, intimate audience where we're going to be pretty close up with them, then that allows certain things and takes away other things as, as presenters that we need to keep in mind. Uh, but if we're giving it in front of a huge crowd, in an auditorium or something like that, which is, you know, just a much larger crowd, uh, then that's going to affect the type of visuals we use and the, the type of examples we use and just the type of language we use and everything else about it, right? So we need to be uh, aware of the facilities that will be in use as we deliver this presentation. Another thing to think about with, with facilities, so is what kind of technology is going to be available? Are we going to have, you know, access to a computer and projector and, and a microphone? And if so, what what kind of microphone and how many? And are we going to be tied to a lectern? Are we going to be able to move around? All those types of things we need to understand. Or is it going to be much more um, simplified? We're just not going to have access to those things, depending on the situation. That, that may be the case. So we need to know that going in so we can adjust our presentation accordingly. You know, I know I just was reading an article from one presenter, one experienced speaker who said that they travel with kind of one of these kits where uh, it's kind of a travel kit, but they, they have all of their different adapters and, and their, their presentation clicker and extra batteries and just different whatever it is that they would need for their presentation. They bring it with them because you just never know what, what they're going to have available to to you as a speaker. So you want to be prepared. So this this speaker travels with one of these travel kits full of just uh, all the speaking um, technology that he might need during uh, his presentation. So now we don't all have the opportunity to do that, but it is, you know, something to, keep, to be that prepared and to understand what the facilities are going to be like to that level is really critical. Uh, the next thing we need to do to deliver is one is think about our visual aids. How are we going to use those visual aids? You know, which ones are going to be appropriate depending on the speaking environment, the speaking context that we're in, the speaking situation. Uh, but also then how are we going to use those things? Who's going to be responsible for creating them and for, uh, you know, bringing them to the to the speaking uh, platform and to set them up and things like that? Who's going to be responsible for clicking forward on the PowerPoint if, if that's something you're doing or, um, you know, all of these types of things with our visuals we need to be thinking about not only which ones are going to work best, but how are we going to use them and then practice with them so that we're incorporating it with each speaker um, using them so they get more comfortable during even the practice area, okay. practice time. We actually need to think about delivery, just, you know, modes of delivery and, and how we're going to deliver the speech. So but there are different, four different modes of primary modes of delivery that we use in public speaking that we, that we generally talk about even today still. Um, w one is what we call memorized, and it is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, where everybody memorizes their portion of the speech. That can be really good in terms of, you know, everybody is very clear on their content and on what, you know, what they're supposed to speak about. Uh, but it can also be a challenge because 
Um, it's easy to forget. Obviously, if you memorize something, you're depending on your memory. And so you may um, forget some of that. So you may need to. Uh, and, and so if you forget it, then you you lose your cues, though. Right. If you if you get that, then you forget, then you lose your cues. Everybody's lost and that can be a problem. The whole thing can fall apart if somebody's not, you know, sure of what what comes next and what they're supposed to be saying. So memorize can have advantages, but it can also be fairly risky. Another mode of presentation, another mode of delivery is impromptu, which is where you are not you, you know, you kind of have some knowledge of this area, but but you don't really have much advanced warning of the speech. It's kind of a spur of the moment type thing. Hopefully it's not the case. Certainly with the group presentation, that's that wouldn't be good for you to do a, an impromptu speech for a group preparation or a group presentation, because I mean, again, you need that preparation. You need that time in advance to get in sync and to do all that planning, which is really important. Um, and so impromptu would not be an ideal way to give a group presentation for sure. Manuscript is sort of similar to memorized in that you are scripting everything out. So you're not required to memorize it, but you are scripting out word for word exactly what it is you want to say. And then the expectation is essentially that everybody then follow that script. Now, that's OK. It works. It can work OK. Again, it can give you a very clear structure of who's responsible for what and those types of things. Um, but uh, you want to be cautious that if you use a manuscript, then you're locked into that. Right? You're locked into that. There's no going away from it. You can't have somebody just go off script now, because then the other people that they're speaking with aren't going to know, again, when it's their cue to start speaking and those kinds of things. So if you're doing a manuscript speech, just remember um, it's got to be divided out in very clear blocks and everybody's got to stay on script. The last type of delivery is extemporaneous. And extemporaneous is where you're thoroughly prepared and you have even a like a, a, a word outline of what you want to do, like a, like a keyword outline right? um, that reminds you of what it is you want to talk about, but doesn't script out every word or every sentence uh, so that you're not locked into that. You can be a little more extemporaneous right? and, and have these bullet points, basically, of what you want to talk about um, and then talk about those things uh, without having to memorize something or be locked into a manuscript it gives you the, the the freedom to to change things up a little bit now you do have to work out your cues very very clearly in advance for your team members so they know when to come in and and when you're finished and those types of things but uh, uh but extemporaneous can provide the opportunity to just correct anything it's also a little more conversational um, because you're, you're coming up with exactly how you want to say something in that moment it's a little more conversational, but it also requires a lot of preparation, a great deal of preparation to, to have that happen effectively. So you got to make a decision about what kind of delivery you're going to have. And also, again, what type of tone of delivery you're going to have. Is it going to be uh, upbeat or is it going to be a little more you know, serious? Because uh, you can't have one person be like all wacky, right, with their thing. And then the next person be real stoic and serious about things. You've got to find some balance there where everybody's able to do what it is they need to do um, without um, stepping on anybody else's toes, without without crossing, you know, lines with anybody else. And the way they're delivering their speech, you want to have some consistency in the way that everybody's kind of delivering their speech. All of this, of course, requires a great deal of rehearsal. And none of this comes easily. It all requires a ton of rehearsal and working together in advance. Uh, so you want to save time for that. You don't want to make this a last minute thing. You want to have time to go through, you know, kind of dry runs of this multiple times using your visuals, you know, using basically everything just as it would be in the time of the speech. So you can get comfortable and you can get a feel for what's happening there. And, and that you're all, again, on the same page. You're all in sync. That requires a great deal of rehearsal. So hopefully this gives you some indication of what it is, is required, what is necessary to do an effective group presentation. Um, they can be they can work very well. Again, it spreads out the workload, doesn't put the pressure on any singular person necessarily or have any just one person in the spotlight. Uh, so it can be helpful in alleviating some of those apprehensions as well, because you don't have all everything falling on one person, either in the workload or in the presentation itself. So uh, it can be very effective in a number of instances, but you've just got to be aware of these things and, and understand how to do your group presentation as effectively as possible. 
If you have questions about giving group presentations or anything else about small group communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that this is giving you some insight into and some confidence in how to do effective group presentations.